What's up, YouTubes? This is James from Sailing Zingar. I'm gonna show you today how to go from this to that. Oh, yes, sexy, sexiness. This is sexiness right here, that. What's up guys, so first let me tell you that this video is gonna be an addendum to my first two videos. If you have not seen those videos, this is video number one. Click on this link and it'll take you there before you watch this. Because in this one I'm not gonna repeat all the stuff that I've already taught you guys. How to do a Mobius splice, how to make a dead eye, how to do the frapping knot, how to do the whipping, what size line to use, what kind of berries to use. That's all gonna be in the last two videos. In this video, I'm gonna show you how I worked with Kraken Structures to make my rig as strong as possible. I got contacted by Brian Toss, thank you Brian. Uh, if you guys don't have his book, it's The Rigger's Apprentice. It's the Bible. You can find it in the link in, my, in the description. Anyway, Brian told me, hey, you know, that, that's not really the strongest point load. So I got contacted by another guy, Luke, with Kraken Structures, who I worked with for this rig. And he made me some new toggles. I'm going to show you what I did, what I did wrong, where I changed it, and how I did everything. Full disclaimer, you're going to want this ringing on your boat. I'm about to climb my mast with this big clunky ass camera, so I hope you guys appreciate this. I'm risking my life for you. Okay guys, this is the old split thimble with the split toggle that I used from my old rigging. It's not very strong because it's, it's, it has a point load right here. Here and on the other side. It's a double, double point load. So what we did to change that, with Kraken's help, this is my new toggle and this is my new splitless thimble. This is much, much stronger and it's gonna last for the life of the boat. I've already done the starboard side. We're gonna do the port side today. We're gonna put some chafing protection on the outside of the, the outer shroud to protect it from the sail because I was having a chafing problem with the sail. And it's gonna be so much stronger and so much cooler. Hope you're ready for some cool shit. So this is everything we need for the shrouds. I apologize for the engine noise, but part of being a cruising sailor is you need to charge your batteries. And when there's no sun, I need to run my engine for an hour. So it just so happens to coincide with this. All right, so this is everything that I need to do my side shrouds, the upper and intermediate shrouds on the sides. They are gonna look super, super cool. We have this really nice, dead simple dead eye with a Turk's head knot and a little bite. And then we have matching red and green for port and starboard. These are the new toggles that I got from Kraken. This is the upper toggle, so it's a little bit lighter to be on the, on the top of the mast. And here's the lower toggles. And these are gonna have to be rotated 90 degrees. So these are gonna be the rotation toggles. So this is what it'll look like when it's done. It'll be like that on the deck. Way, way better than the crap I had before and it just fits together perfectly. You did a really good job, Luke. Super, super sweet. And then we're gonna use Dyneema line, red for port and green for starboard as the whipping line. And then these are the seizing knots and they're already pre-buried. They're pre-length. I mean, I can't mess this up. <laughs> well, let's see. So all of these thimbles he polished by hand. This is the original thimble when it comes and this is the thimbles that he sent me. This lowers the friction on the whipping line. When you're pulling the whipping line, it should pull really nice and smooth. And with the quarter inch, with this size thimble, we should get four wraps, and I'm gonna make them 60 inches to absorb the shock load, according to Kraken, according to the directions here. 
Uh, he sent me detailed directions. He sent me, I, I mean, he made this really James proof. It should be really easy, so come with me and I'll show you guys how I do this. So let's jump right in here. We're gonna start by taking off our old frapping knots and undoing the whipping, this 1 8 Dyneema. Then we're gonna take these dead eyes off and take the toggles off, both of them. And then we're gonna replace all of it with new gear, re-splice the line on the top to be a little bit shorter, and then put new whipping on it, put a new frapping knot on it, and I'll show you guys exactly what I'm gonna do to make it, everything is better. Every single step of this is gonna be stronger, easier, better, and cleaner. So check it out. If you don't have one of these, this is a Meyerchin Marlin Spike. Contact Luke at Kraken about getting yourself one. He even puts on a Dyneema lanyard with a Turk's head knot. Very cool. Now that my whipping lines are set up, I can start installing this stuff. If you don't know how to do this, refer to my other videos. All right, that's set up, that was easy. Now we just gotta splice this. And what we need to do is we need to measure five feet on top of this to the splice. Okay, now that we got this cup of length, we're gonna put some chafing protection on it to protect it for the sale. This is gonna be our chafing protection line. We're gonna take the core out of this, put it in this. Okay, now you can see I've got the splice in it, and I just got this to hold it there while I stitch the cover on the top. I've already put the cover on the, the rope and spliced it. Whew, that was uncomfortable. All right, now the only thing I have left to do is to add my whipping onto here, stretch this out. After it's stretched out, I can let go, and then I can pull down the, the chafing protection and whip it at the bottom. So that's what we're gonna do now. All right, we're all done with the wrapping. It's got four complete wraps. Now we're gonna put it onto the yanking rope and get it real tight on the winch. Okay, this is what we've done here. This is a, shot, a soft shackle to the end of my whipping. And we're gonna go down to a turning block here. This is just a Harkin block and then that goes all the way back to my winch. So, you can see, as this goes down. Okay, it's tight. This is super, super tight. And we're gonna get the construction stretch out of this red line. And then we're gonna pull down the sheathing up there, we're gonna pull that down over, and then once this is the construction stretches out of this, after tomorrow or something, we can let this go and then whip the sheathing down here, cut all the frayed ends off, and it'll look real pretty. Now let's do the frapping knot. The shroud frapping knot, we're using this little tiny Dyneema, and we've got about six feet of it, seven feet of it, and it's buried and, and spliced on both ends. Okay, now that this is done, this, I'm gonna use one of these little strap ties on it. So ultimately, this is what we have. This is now nice and tight. Going up, there's the end of the line. Here's the shroud frapping knot, and here's the thimble. And then up there is the frayed chafing protection that we're gonna pull down after this construction stretches out of this. So, that's it. It's not that hard to do, especially with the directions and the information and the parts that Kraken sent me. Now I'm gonna do it on the other stay. I'm not gonna record that part, but I'll give you an overview after we're done. Okay, a common question that I get is, James, don't you have to touch your rig way more often than stainless? 
And that's kind of a loaded question because yes, at first you do. Once you get the construction stretch out of Dyneema though, it just has a little bit of creep. So you have to adjust it every six months, four to six months that I've found. If you don't know how to tune your rig, that's a completely different problem. Learn how to tune your rig first, then come back to me and say that this is harder. It's not, it's just a little more work to get the stretch out initially. And with the new flavors of Dyneema coming out, that's even negated because they're already pre-stretched. Now, if you want to be a Luddite in your wooden boat with your coal stove and your, and your corn cob pipe and say, I don't trust those ropes to be in my wire rigging. A monkey with a knife could just take your rig down. You know, that's only happened to one guy I know of. And Angus, I'm talking to you. That, that really did happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't really worry about that. This stuff is super, super strong. Even if it does chafe, the chafe that, that I showed you in the beginning of the video, this, that is over six months of the sails chafing. And it's barely, barely fraying the wires. We're doing something now where we're putting little little burritos of uh, sunbrella or fabric over the shroud wrappings to, to protect it from chafe. You can do all kinds of stuff. This is a bit overkill for this boat, really. But I'm, I'd rather have this on our thousand mile passage than a wire that's popping out. I'd, I'd ultimately rather have this because I can, I can replace it by myself with what's on my boat right now. Okay, till next time, stay cool San Diego. What does he say at the end stay of that movie? Stay classy. Oh, till next time, stay classy San Diego. And that took all of three minutes, okay? It's not that hard.